I want to talk about this in two parts, the top part and then I want to add the bottom part. So notice that this is a transcend and include move. So here's part of the model which stands on its own and then we can add the bottom part which transcends and includes this part. So we have um, some particular situation that we're in and we have something we want to be different, an outcome. And then we have actions to get there. So this is a classic model you've seen it everywhere. If you're in perf into performance improvement, this is gap analysis. Or if you're into Robert Fritz and Peter Senge and organizational learning, this is situation or it's creative tension. You know, current reality, future vision, actions. This archetype is everywhere in development and psychotherapy and OD and coaching. Okay, so we start by taking a look at the situation, we analyze it, we see what our client's belief systems are and so forth. We articulate something that's gonna be different and then we design action steps to move towards that goal. And we can coach here and do just fine. And this is, you know, a lot of where, a lot of most coaching is, happens here. Okay, so dropping down a level, this is where, um, the presence piece comes in and what we say is that part of this situation is the client's habit nature the client's wiring the client what the client has embodied and that um, fundamentally because the client lives in a bell jar it's going to be difficult for them to see those things and so the coaching conversation becomes a container or a venue in which the client can if they are present begin to witness this conditioning or habit nature showing up in real time. Not as a theoretical out there, but right here, right now. Does this make sense? The, the assumption is that the client will be revealed in the moment in this conversation if we're both paying attention. Okay? And there are different moves that we can make, relational coaching moves, to do this, to support this. We can offer assessments, sort of reflecting back what we're, what we're seeing or what we're witnessing. We can create immediacy by creating connections between what's happening right here, right now in this conversation and what the client reports out there. Uh, we can reflect how, how uh, we are being impacted by the client in this moment. Okay? We're going to practice some of this this afternoon, so I'll go into a little more detail on that. So in in, when this happens, sometimes there's this moment of waking up. And we can't magically produce that, but sometimes it happens. A famous uh, Zen teacher in California back in the 60s or 70s or something, Baker Roshi said, enlightenment is an accident, practice makes us accident prone. <laughs> so we enter into this conversation and we're present together and sometimes by grace there's this waking up and sometimes there isn't. You know, you can't script it. But sometimes there's this moment of recognition when the client goes, oh, I see what I'm doing here. You've been in those moments on both ends, as a helper and as a coachee. I see what I'm doing. This is what I always do. This is predictable. This is what I learned. Maybe I understand where it came from. Maybe I don't. It doesn't matter. We don't have to do the emotional archaeology of trying to figure out how we got to be the person who we are. We don't usually have to do the emotional archaeology. Sometimes we do. Okay? But in that moment of recognition, there's this release of energy, and all of a sudden, the client's world is bigger. Literally, the client's world is bigger. We're out of the bell jar. There's more oxygen. There's a bigger view. There's a sense of possibility. And what the client was embedded in is now out here where we can witness it and talk about it and be aware of it. Okay, so that's witness and wake up. Well, after this happens, there's this liberation of energy and then the client has shifted state. And this shift becomes really important. They're actually in a different awareness or a different consciousness. So, um, so the move, the coaching moves here are reorganizing. It sometimes it's like a physical reorganization, sometimes a reorganization of perspective. Um, centering, like feeling this possibility because the client's state is part of the outcome. 
the outcome isn't just rearranging blocks on the field out there. It's also about rearranging the client's consciousness, the client rearranging their own consciousness, their own awareness, what's, what's in the scope of their awareness in real time, moment by moment, and it begins right here, right now. So the client changes state, and then after, uh, when this happens, we might ask as a coach, so right now you're, you're more aware, you're more energized, so how did you do that? And they go back and they rewind and they describe explicitly how they did it. How did they come to be different? Because if the client walks out of the coaching session, feels like, and, and says to themselves, oh, my brilliant coach Karen is so good. She really, uh, she really helped me here. And uh, in that coaching conversation, I really saw things clearly. If she attributes this different state to the coach or to the context, she gives away the power of owning it. This is really seductive to coaches, and sometimes in the coaching field we like to say, you know, coaching is so magical. Well, coaching is not magical. <laughs> coaching isn't magical. Magic happens, but it's not that coaching is magical. It's that the client sometimes, um, by grace, in the course of a coaching conversation, wakes up. But what we want is them to own it. And when they can make that process of waking up explicit and articulate how they did it, then it, it moves from being a magic moment in a coaching conversation to a replicable technique, a practice, something they can go out and do over and over and over again to build the physiology. Okay, And then the last thing is practice. One of the great things about coaching is we have this conversation and then there's a period of time where they do field work and then they come in and have another conversation, that iterative process progresses over time. And so together we want to design field work that um, in these different domains that builds the physiology and the sustainability of the change over time. Okay, so that's part of it also. Okay, so here all of this is working in presence with a client's moment by moment experience to build awareness, understanding, um, and physiologically supported new behaviors. And it sits underneath situation, outcome, action.